Now it is my honor to introduce you Little Rock Director of Athletics, Chase Conk. In his first year as Director of Athletics, Chase has been the driving force behind all the excitement and energy surrounding Trojan Athletics. Since January, Chase has enhanced the organization of the Athletics Office, developed a, brand new, a new brand, started a student athletic support group, the Maroon Mob, launched a basketball season ticket campaign, and retained and recruited unmatched coaches. Chase is someone who bleeds maroon and gray, but it is his love for, for Little Rock Trojan fans and supporters and Little Rock's teams that make us proud to call him our athletic director. Please welcome Chase Conk, the athletic director at UALR. Good evening. How about them Trojans? Before I get into uh, my remarks this evening, I'll call Chancellor Anderson uh, up to the front. Dr. Anderson is going to recognize a few special guests that we have with us this evening. Chancellor. Thanks very much, Chase. And wow, what a great crowd we have here tonight. Uh, this, uh, this is a special, spectacular, and many respects, but uh, one of those is in the uh, number of guests that I'm going to introduce tonight from uh, two boards that are very important to the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. First of all, uh, from the UA system we have with us tonight, and, and I uh, wait till I finish the whole group and then we'll show our appreciation for their presence, <clears throat> but we have uh, assist, UA system president Dr. Don Bobbitt and wife Susan. We have Interim Chancellor from Fayetteville, Dr. Dan Farrader is here. And then from the Board of Trustees of the University of Arkansas, Jim Von Grimp, Jane Rogers and her husband Jay, uh, Rennie Rutledge, uh, Ben Heineman, uh, Mark Waldrop and a Angela, uh, John Goodson, uh, Steve Broughton and his wife Cheryl, and uh, Cliff Gibson. And let's uh, express our appreciation for the attendance of these people. <clears throat> And then from the UALR Board of Visitors, we have John Bailey, Kevin and Kathy Crass, Jay Hartman and Exa, uh, Lewis May and Debbie, and uh, Danielle Walker and Edward, and our appreciation to them. And I could not sit down without saying just a big thank you to all of you for being here tonight and supporting uh, Trojan Athletics, uh, I especially want to give a shout out to uh, Andrea Peel and Jane Yoakum, who are the co-chairs of this great event. Thank you, Chancellor. Tonight we have a unique opportunity to embrace our past, to recognize our current success, and to look ahead to our future. Tonight we celebrate our, our coaches, our staff, our student athletes, our administration, and we recognize our great city and the countless people that believe maroon and silver. Speaking of our Lowell supporters, Spectacular 2015 would not be possible without the help of some very special people, and that's starting with Rick and Mary Edwards of Triple S Alarm. Rick and Mary, thank you for your continued support, for believing in us, for sticking with us, and for all you do for our student athletes. To our spectacular committee, what a fantastic group of volunteers, especially Andrea Peel and Jane Yoakum. This event would not be what it is today uh, without you over the years. This event has raised $1.1 million for student athletes in the past six years, and it's a lot because of these two ladies here. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. To our staff, Sheena Howe, Casey Lane, thank you for your continued dedication in making this another special night. And to all of our sponsors and everyone here, we appreciate your attendance. We're indebted to you. We call you friends, and we appreciate all you do for Little Rock's team. At this time, I would like to call up all of our student athletes that are with us. If you guys would come up to the front, I want to brag on them for a minute. I'll tell you a little bit about their accomplishments. Each year, we're able to tell great stories about our student athletes, and this year is no exception. In 2014 and 15, your student athletes combined for a cumulative GPA 
of 3.25. That marks one of the highest totals in over 15 years, and over 70 percent of them maintain a 3.0 GPA, which is just remarkable. Our graduation rate ranks as one of the highest in the country, as we boasted an 83 percent graduation, graduation rate this past year. Last year, coast to coast, over 225 times, these young men and women represented you with Little Rock across their chest, and they did it well. They represent themselves, they represent their teammates in this institution, and they represent you. And if that video earlier didn't get you fired up, I don't know what will. We'll never forget the run that Van Compton and our volleyball team made, winning 25 straight matches on their way to a Sunbelt Conference championship and a second round NCAA appearance after de defeating Kansas. Nor will we forget Joe Foley's Trojans and the unbelievable run they made defeating LSU and Oklahoma in the regular season, going on to the NCAAs, and then defeating Texas A&M on national television. As supporters of Trojan Athletics, I want you to view your presence here this evening as an investment in us, as an investment in these young people who have extremely bright futures. They will always remember Little Rock and the great people of this community that did what they needed to do to help them achieve their dreams. Let's give one more round of applause for our outstanding student athletes. Thank you, guys. This past year, we, we've experienced a great deal of change. We have new administrators, we have new coaches, a new brand. But through all of this change, there's one constant, and that's our continued commitment to our student athletes, to our campus community, and to our city. I truly feel we are in the midst of exciting times for Trojan Athletics. While we've witnessed many great accomplishments and achieved many great milestones, I feel our best days are ahead. We are making great strides, but in order for us to fully maximize our potential, it's going to take all of us. It's our time. Together we can do it. Together we can build a Division I Department of Athletics that the Little Rock metropolitan area deserves. We are all members of Little Rock's team, and we all play a role in our success. I'm confident that tonight's honoree can tell you all about the importance of a community and how that many of you in this room over 20 years ago made an investment in this program that led him and helped him to achieve his dreams. Tonight we're here to honor a man who means so much to so many. He means a great deal to our city and our state and to this institution. Derek Fisher is synonymous with Little Rock, and in my opinion, he is the ultimate representative of Little Rock's team. A Parkview Patriot turned Trojan, Derek has proven himself as a superior athlete, a driven competitor, and an even better person. Seven years ago at the inaugural Spectacular, we honored the matriarch of Trojan athletics and Annette Fisher, and Ms. Fisher's here with us this evening. Annette Fisher's kind heart and compassionate ways has made her a mother figure to many of us, and her continued contributions to the mission of this university are countless. The Fisher family has played a tremendous role in our campus, this university, and our city. And to commemorate their many contributions from this day forward, we will name the Spectacular Honorees Award for both Derek and Annette, as the Fisher Award will be, pre will be presented to all future Spectacular Honorees. As I mentioned earlier, tonight is a time to celebrate our past, and we have a unique opportunity to do just that with the introduction of our honoree. We have been fortunate to have many great coaches over the years, and we are grateful to have with us this evening former Little Rock Trojan basketball coach, Wimp Sanderson. <laughs> coach Sanderson led the Trojans from 1994 to 1999, compiling 85 wins won a Sunbelt Conference Championship in 1996 and also made a trip to the NIT. While there were several notable players, and a few of them here this evening, during Coach's time in Little Rock, there was none more accomplished than that of Derek Fisher. Coming to Little Rock following a long stint at the University of Alabama, Coach Sanderson brought with him winning basketball, a tenacious work ethic, and one sharp plaid jacket. 
So please help me welcome back to Little Rock and to the podium tonight, former Trojan basketball coach, Wimp Sanderson. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm really pleased to be here to see so many former fans that I knew a long time ago and to have had the opportunity to coach here for five years and to be able to coach the people that I did. And I want to thank all of you for attending and I want to thank all of you for supporting uh, UALR and, and giving your contributions to them. And I appreciate it before I get into to Derek that more than you'll ever know. For an outsider now, uh, you're all close to my heart. There's, a, there's not a better place on earth than Little Rock. I love Little Rock. I arrived in 1994. Bill Walker uh, and the athletic director met me over uh, in Memphis and talked to me about becoming the basketball coach. So we talked about it, and I don't know, I guess we decided on the telephone or something. Anyway, I decided that I would do it. And I came over here in the spring, of, right after that, early spring of 1994. And when I walked in, the coaches, uh, not the coaches, but Bill and some of the other people said, I didn't want to tell you this when we hired you, but all the players have decided to transfer. I said, run, by, run that by me again and go real slow. Um, I said, you're trying to hire me to get the players to stay with my kind of background of being fairly tough. I'm going to ask them to stay. So I don't know. I brought the, I brought the kids in from time to time, well, for a few days there, and tried to talk to him. I don't remember what my conversation was with Derek particularly. I told him what kind of program we were going to have, what we were going to try to do. He listened like he always does. He didn't really say anything. The only thing I can remember is that there was a bunch of water on the floor. It rained real hard. That old building, it leaked. And so I want to say this. Thank you for this new building. But we visited and we and I talked and, I, and he left. I don't know that I don't know that Derek said I'm going to stay, and I don't even know that he was one that was going to leave. But the rumor was that everybody was going to leave. So when practice started, now let me, let me explain something to you. This is not my first rodeo. I was 32 years at another place. So when I talk about Derek. I'm talking about a lot of players. Never had I had one that worked as hard, that gave that kind of effort, that showed that kind of leadership, that, that was a team player, yet was a guy with great ability, was a guy that the rest of the teammates respected so much. Now, as I said, I had a lot of great players before I got here, but none that worked and acted the way, the way Derek did. I, I would have, back, well, we'd have practice and things would not go good in practice. And that went real good for me anyway. Uh, but they, they didn't go good. I said, Derek, you need to get them over and huddle them up because we're going to practice tonight if you don't. Undoubtedly, he had something to do that night or every night because he got them over and he huddled them up. And we didn't have to come back and practice that night or uh, any night. But he worked um, extremely, extremely hard. Um, did everything he possibly could to make our basketball program and our basketball team as good as possible. He became the Sun Belt player of the year didn't become he worked worked at it and was the Sun Belt player of the year when he was drafted uh, by the Lakers you know some people get all tickled that they're drafted and they don't do much a lot of people get in the gymnasium and they call themselves practicing by getting in there and what I call fiddle dicking around <laughs> they don't do anything they just get in there and they come out. I said, you work out today? Oh, yes, sir, coach. I worked out. Yeah, I've seen your cotton picking workouts. Uh, he didn't do that. He didn't do that. 
Now the season's over with and Derek's graduated. I'm going Pleasant Valley to play golf. But the guy that fed in the basketball is sitting right here, Clarence Finley. Give, it, give Clarence Finley a hand because Clarence Finley, first of all, first of all, Derek Fisher knew what he needed to work on. We all, we all got things to work on. I got speech, you know, giving a speech is one of my problems. We all, we all got things to work on. But the thing about it is that Derek Fisher realized that he had something to work on. He wanted to improve, he wanted to improve his, his three-point shooting. He wanted to get better with his range. You know, we had a different range in the NBA than we did when he played for Little Rock. And the guy who fed him the basketball probably as much or more than anybody is sitting right here to my left, right here in front. And I don't, I get zero credit, none, none. Eric Fisher and Coach Finley worked, and he didn't fiddle dick around. He worked, and he got better every day. And when he got to the pros, he was a heck of a lot player because he worked. He worked. Coach Finley worked with him, and Clarence was one of my assistants, and he did a terrific job. So anyway, he was drafted. I, I, you know, I don't really go by stats and so forth. Uh, I just know how he played and how he worked and how he hugged. I think, he, I think his five NBA championships they won when he, when he played. Maybe it's more than that. If it is, Derek will correct me. But I, but, I, but I do know one thing. There was three with the Lakers, and then he left. And then he came back, and there was two more. Now, you figure that out. He was on three. He left, and he came back. And they had two more. And the last time I looked, and I'm living in Birmingham, three plus two is five. And so that, that's, the kind of, that's the kind of influence, that's the kind of effort, that's the way he was with himself and also with his teammates. 18 years he played in the pros. And now he's the coach of one of the most prestigious rebuilding teams in the country ever. The uh, Knicks probably, probably looked upon as with great basketball history, and he'll get them turned around. It's going to take some time because he's got to go through the draft, and he can't draft as many, good, as many players as he was, as good players as he was. So it'll take some time. And I don't want to get up here. They, I don't want to get up here and spend all the time um, saying things that, that maybe you think I'm, I'm going on too much. But you, you don't, some of you don't know me. But if I don't believe it, I don't say it. I just don't, I don't do it. I just don't say anything. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to I see some of his teammates uh, here. Um, I'm happy to be here to support him, what he supports, uh, the university. And I want to welcome him up to the podium. He is, out of doubt, the most outstanding basketball player in person UALR has ever had, that Little Rock has ever had, and that the state of Arkansas has ever had. My former pupil, I didn't teach him anything, Derek Fisher. this over here so I don't break it while I'm speaking. All right. Oh man. Um I don't really I don't do well with, you know, people um you know saying a bunch of nice stuff about me. Um I really don't. Um because that's not I don't walk in the room with that stuff, you know. Um, I'm a regular guy. Um, I grew up right here in Little Rock, and um, you know, I haven't really done anything for the attention or the notoriety. I just do things that um, I believe in and that I'm passionate about, and uh, just try to work as hard as I can at it. So, um, 
you know, all the nice things that have been said tonight, um, thank you. Um, I, I cannot say thank you enough. I'll try to um, as best as I, as I can, but that truly is not, you know, why um, I do what I do. Um, I want to start formally. I want to, first of all, thank um, for sure all of the sponsors uh, that make nights like tonight happen. Um, it's, it's impossible to put on events um, and get this many people in a room and all of the things that you see come from uh, not just financial support and commitment, but you know, I think people truly believing in the cause or the purpose or the reason why the event is being held in the first place. Uh, and so to more sponsors than I can necessarily remember, uh, obviously Triple S Alarm is labeled on everything. They obviously are very, very important. And we truly, truly um, appreciate everything, not just with this event or tonight, but uh, your support of the program has been consistent for a long time. And um, I personally thank you very much for your support tonight and uh, in the past and hopefully in, in the future as well. So thank you to not just the company, but the family, to the Edwards family for all the support that you give. Um, Linda and Rush Harding, thank you for what you do for this university, participating with this event tonight. Um, truly amazing. Uh, I can go on and on. Glazers, the UAMS, ortho and sports medicine folks who I thankfully didn't have to see a lot when I played here. Uh, even though I know a lot of you very, very well, I was never really a patient, so I don't know why we're so close. Um, but thank you um, for everything that you've always done for the university, uh, for my family in particular, who uh, you have had some patience from the Fisher family, uh, just not me. Uh, but thank you. And then the list goes forever and ever. Um, hopefully I got a chance to meet most of you at some point. But uh, thank you very much uh, to the committee, to Andrea and Jane, and all of the people on the committee and the board and that make all of this look way better than it probably felt. Um, thank you. Um, I don't obviously live here full time, so I did not pick out any of these decorations. I didn't put a flag in any of these centerpieces or anything. So none of that happens without um, those two young ladies right there, uh, Sheena, Chase, Chancellor, um, everybody. I could go on forever, so please don't be offended if I don't say your name. Um, to my family, my mom, my dad, um, you know, obviously I'm not here without the two of you, <laughs> if you, if you know what I mean. <laughs> um, it's an adult only event, so forgive me. Um, nothing happens without the two of you. Um, you know, there's not enough time for me to stand up here and describe what you guys have done for me, not just um, bringing me into this world, but trying your best to educate me about this world uh, and the things that I would need to do to not play in the NBA, but just be successful in life, to find a way to make a living, to be a good person, to get a good education, very basic and simple things. And um, working hard at something, not being complacent, um, you know, being willing to sacrifice for other people. Those are all things that I was taught from the time I could understand words. So thank you uh, so much for being who you are because you make me who I am. Um, to extended family and friends at the tables here, Coach Finley, Miss Finley. Um, if I didn't have parents, those would be my parents because I ate more dinners at their house sometimes probably than my house. Um, thank you for allowing me to be um, your son in a sense because I literally spent a lot of time um, at your house and um, what I learned observing you and your family and your kids being basically like a brother and sister to me uh, and the time we put in at the gym over the years coach and um, 
also I'm not here without your love and support. Um, so thank you so much, to my sister, my cousins, um, everybody. Um, you all have played a part in anything anybody could ever say positive about me. So thank you uh, so much for being who you guys are. Um, all right, I got through <laughs> uh, that part for the most part. Um, Duran, Cynthia, Sandy Fox, friends, business associates, very close. Um, they helped me to work with our committee and everybody here to put this event on. So I want to thank you guys as well for being here and supporting me on and off the court. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm more than honored and humbled to be here. I'm sure as you can tell, because I, sometimes I sound awkward, like I'm not comfortable up here. And then other times I sound like I'm com very comfortable. So excuse me if it kind of goes back and forth because it's emotional to, um, to be back home this particular time. I come home basically every year um, for different reasons, mostly just personal, to see family. Uh, and I'm in and out before anybody even knows I was here. And that's generally the way I like it because home is home. I come home to just come home. I don't come home to be celebrated or honored, although I'm obviously very thankful and humbled tonight for this honor. And so being here this time is different because I'm not home just to enjoy some home cooked food or hang out with friends and family. I'm here for something much larger than um, I could have ever imagined. When I first stepped foot on this campus, in 1992, it was actually for a workout. Uh, coach Ken Coggins, who was the strength and conditioning coach at the time, literally worked me out so hard that I could not lift my arms up to drive home. And that was my first experience as a college student on this campus. Um, and to think about that experience and how much has happened since then, and to be back here tonight definitely humbling um, and that's where the emotion comes from because a lot took place during that time a lot of life experiences um, could never have imagined being here tonight so thank you again what this reminds me most of is that it truly does take a village um, or a city <laughs> uh, or an entire community to raise a child. And it sounds cliche, it sounds old. It's, most of the kids probably born after 1980 something have no idea what that really means. Like they, everybody used to say it takes a village, it takes a village, it takes a village. Um, being back here at this particular time confirms that for me because I've seen people and spoken to people and interacted with people that without a doubt impacted my life in an extremely positive way. Not just friends and family and cousins and people that you assume play a positive role in your life, but um, teachers, professors, um, classmates, uh, friends, friends of friends that were friends people that you didn't even know really knew that you went to school here, that saw me play basketball, that told me that they prayed for me and they didn't, I didn't even know who they were prior to today or tonight. Um, it truly does take an entire village to raise one child. And to so many of you in the room, I owe so much gratitude uh, for that reason. Uh, I, spoke to the student athletes yesterday over at the EIT building. I told a lot of uncomfortable examples of how closely Coach Van Compton and I became during my years here at the university because Coach uh, is obviously the women's volleyball coach. And if you get where I'm going, there were, I spent too much time around the volleyball team. And, you know, Coach had to straighten me out from time to time for me to stay away from her team so they could focus on winning 25 games in a row, which they didn't do while I was here. So it probably, 
I guess it had to do with me leaving the university so that women's volleyball could be better um, than it was. Um, but from Coach Van Compton, obviously, to Coach Finley, and back around to the gentleman who introduced me here, Wim Sanderson. Um, before he arrived, we basically were flailing as a basketball program. Um, not here to bash anybody in particular or specifically, but it was, it was a rough stretch. As he described, a lot of young men were leaving and no intentions of playing basketball here anymore. Personally, I wasn't leaving Little Rock. I wasn't sure about Wimp, you know. I didn't know if we were gonna get along. He told me everything I needed to hear, but I, I didn't know if it was gonna work. But I was gonna stay and bet on Little Rock, bet on the university, uh, and bet on him. And without a doubt, uh, the trajectory of my basketball career and what has happened since then, you can literally tie to when he came and took the job in 1995, 1994, uh, because the visibility, the notoriety, the accomplishments and achievements that um, already existed in his resume and, and what he represented as a coach, he brought that here. And so people that normally would care less about our program, how many games we were playing, who we played against, they would actually come watch us because he coached here. Uh, we completely changed our style of play. We used to walk the ball up the court, score 50 points. When he came, he ran us way past what humans are supposed to run in order for, to get us in condition to play faster. So now we're scoring 75, 80 points a night. I think more people enjoyed watching us play when Coach was here uh, because it was a fun style of play. We picked up full court, we got after people. Uh, and so thank you uh, for betting on Little Rock, on betting on this university, and the fact that success and achievement could be possible in this place, on this campus, um, which it really is possible. I'll close with this so we can get to what the committee wants me to get to, and that's the money part. Um, <laughs> they're already looking at me like, if you take it too long, bro, you, we're gonna have to open the bar again in order to get the money flowing. <laughs> um, I'll close with this. Um, <clears throat> you know, impacting others is really what we were kind of all created or designed to do. We really weren't put here to just do us by ourselves. Like, that sounds ridiculous even when you think about it. Uh, impacting other people's lives, touching other people in a positive way, whether through word, through financial support, through prayer, uh, through time, uh, through going to get shots up with a player, um, tutoring, mentoring, whatever it is. Like, everybody here is created to do something, not just for you, but for somebody else. Uh, and all of that I learned, obviously, at home from my parents, but the, the multiple years that I spent here on this campus, in this community, in this city, that's who we are. That's who we are. Like, we don't maybe get as much notoriety as other cities that have experienced you know, large tragic events and, and, and everyone rallies as a city and everyone is impressed with how the city responds and supports each other when bad things happen. Um, our city does that during good and bad times. We impact other people, that's who we are, that's how we're raised. From the time we come in this world, our mom and dad are telling us that right from the jump. And um, sometimes you don't know you're impacting others. You just are by just being yourself and, and being who you are. Um, a 
former teammate of mine, Joe Stevens, is here tonight. Uh, he is living in Houston, Texas. Came here just to support the event. He's also a, a Little Rock Trojan. There's Joe in the back. Um, I don't know how many people live in Houston or Texas or will be living in Houston or Texas before the election, at least. Joe's running for political office for a judge uh, in Houston, Texas area. So if you are in Houston or you know people in Houston, Joe Stevens is a Little Rock guy. Pass the word along. Check him out. Look into him. He and a beautiful family are going to do some really good things for people in that area. I bring Joe's name up when you talk about impacting others because the first time we met, Joe went to the University of Colorado and he transferred to Little Rock two years into, or maybe it was one or two years, two years into his career. Coach Wimp's son, Barry, was a coach at Colorado. Barry came to work at Little Rock a couple years prior to that, so they had a relationship. Joe came to Little Rock, not because of me, he came to Little Rock because he felt like it could be a good situation. One of the summer days that I was coming to the gym, like Wimp said, Joe was in the gym. So we're shooting, working out, kind of filling each other out. This is a new dude from Colorado. I'm from Little Rock. I'm kind of like, all right, what's, he's looking at me like, what's up? I'm looking at him like, what's up? Well, okay, we on the same team now. So it's cool. It's good. And Joe says to me, are you trying to go to the show? I'm, I'm from Little Rock, so I don't, I'm not sure what that means. I don't know what kind of show Joe was referencing. I don't know if he's talking about movies, Broadway. I don't know. And so I had a strange look on my face like, the show? What you mean the show? He was like, to the NBA, like, to the show. You know what, I really... I don't know if I've thought about it that much. I, I, I mean, I, sure. All right. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but that conversation planted a seed in my mind that wasn't necessarily there prior to that. I came to school here on a scholarship, but really to get the education that was going to lead to the good job in Little Rock, um, I interned at Bell & Company accounting firm in the summers. I planned on being an accountant one day and that was pretty much gonna be my thing. I was gonna probably get married, have a couple kids, live right here in Little Rock, that was gonna be it for me. Not because I couldn't play basketball, that just wasn't what I necessarily had planned for myself. So in closing, when I talk about the responsibility we have to impact others, sometimes we don't know that just a simple word of encouragement or planting a seed or having a thought or sharing with someone that you see something in them that maybe they don't even see in themselves changes people's lives. Because that conversation literally cut a light bulb on in my head that something people in me exist, like they're seeing things in me that I'm not necessarily seeing in myself. So let me think about this in a different way. Literally had no idea that it would turn into, the career it turned into a couple years later, but I literally started thinking about it after that conversation. A peer-to-peer -peer conversation between two guys that were sharing similar experiences. And so I just want to encourage all of us, not just tonight, as we get to the, to the good part, Chase, um, and Andrea, and Jane, and everybody. Um, so I just want to encourage us to make sure that impacting other people is truly what continues to like inspire us and motivate us and challenge us and push us to find ways to continue to maybe be successful and create new relationships and, and things in our lives that we can kind of pass on and share and, and do for others. It's not really for us. I mean, it's great to be successful, to be able to touch other people, to, to make some good money, to have a good life. Great. 
I hope everybody in here is doing that. But then what do we do with that? How do we share it? How do we use it in an effective way so that it impacts somebody else? That's generally what the goal is. Some of the most successful people in the world in business that have more money than we could calculate, they generally get to a point where they take 75 or 80% of it and then they just give it away to charities and communities and foundations. And so obviously the goal is not to just make a lot of money and just put it in the mattress somewhere. It's to try and use it to then build better schools, to change communities, to impact lives, to do a lot of things that don't have anything to do with us individually. So um, I've taken up too much of your time in saying all of this, but I just want to encourage us and leave us with that thought that beyond tonight, a lot of you have already done maybe what you want to do for tonight. Maybe you're comfortable enough with where things are. That's fine. It doesn't end tonight. This is one night. This is an event. Great. We raise a lot of money. We have a great time. We drink some drinks. We leave. Oh, that was great. That was fantastic. We should do that again next year. Okay, well, what, what happens over the next 364 days before next year? What are we doing? Whose lives are we changing? What are we impacting? Uh, so thank you again um, because I, I'm, I promise you, I know for a fact that whatever I so-called represent to you or however you see me, I, I see you in the same way, meaning that you represent to me um, value and opportunity and support and love and nurturing and things that I can't do by myself. So I don't stand up here alone. I stand up here a lot of on the backs and shoulders of most of you sitting out there, parents, family, friends, boosters, supporters, people that paid money for UALR basketball tickets when it probably wasn't worth the money. It definitely wasn't worth going to Barton Coliseum. <laughs> I can tell you that for sure. So let's have some fun in the Jack Stevens Center and raise some money and impact some lives. So thank you. That's it.